Hey guys, it's MC Fixit here. We have a Nissan Frontier 2004 to 2015. We're going to be working on the serpentine belt. This is the D40 series, and uh, that serpentine belt is well hidden under this air intake here. And so I'll show you all the tools, the supplies, and the know how on how you can do this yourself. Here are the tools and the supplies that I use for this. We have a serpentine belt. I'll have a number of these listed in the description of this video that you can choose from. We're going to use a serpentine tool. I do have a 10 millimeter on this right now. That should not have that, but it's a three quarter inch uh, on the end. Uh, then we'll need a 10 millimeter with a three inch extension and a ratchet. Some kind of tray to catch all of your parts. This is magnetic, flathead screwdriver, and an optional needle nose pliers. So step number one is to remove all of the fun plastic that they put on these Nissans. Uh, we need to first get these bolts out of the top where the engine cover is and these are just two 10 millimeters right here. And so just go and take your time, spin them off. It's pretty easy to get them off by hand. You may not even need the ratchet, uh, but also don't lose them down in your engine bay there because that could be a big problem. And so just go ahead and pull those off just like that. Put them in your tray so they are kept safe and not rolling around. I then go ahead and pick that straight up and off and that comes off pretty easy. Those little grommets help hold that on. Stick that off to the side and then we have two little screws right here. And same thing, 10 millimeter, just go ahead and ratchet those right off. They're pretty small so just take your time and get both of those off. Next we're going to go ahead and remove the air intake. These are just some flat head little screws and uh, just go ahead and untighten them. And you got one on this side as well that you'll have to get as well. It's nice that it has these little flexi tubes because they do pull off pretty easy. And now we'll go ahead and use our needle nose pliers to go ahead and pull this vacuum line off. And once you slide that down, it should come out pretty easy. You probably could get that with your fingers. That's why I put optional, but that little uh, end right there does make it a little more difficult. Once you have all that taken off, our next step is to remove the old belt. It is going to be kind of hard to see, but I do have it circled right there. We're going to have to use this 3 8 end of this breaker bar uh, that is meant for serpentine belts and push it counterclockwise. It does not look like I have enough room, so I am going to have to remove one more part. So now with that uh, part removed right here, this is that air intake, just a couple little clips on it and move it out of the way. I will have enough room now for my entire tool to get down in there. I do know a couple of people who would try to use a ratchet down in there. My hands are too big, so this serpentine belt tool works really well to get on that belt tensioner. And right there it is in that center. And you just flip it, you push it in, and then you turn it counterclockwise, which will allow you to reach down and pull that belt off somewhere. Doesn't really matter where, but you will want to study the belt or at least have this diagram uh, handy so you know exactly how everything goes back on. And that right there gave me the ability to just pull this thing right out. Um, getting it out, in my opinion, is always easier than getting it in. So we will show you full details on how exactly I went ahead and put that on. And you can go ahead and see your belt right there. One other thing I like to do is compare my belts. Um, it's kind of a weird thing I like to do, but I do like to see them, make sure they are the exact same size and look at the grooves and everything else to make sure it will work properly. So now it's time to install that new belt. We're going to go ahead and slide it down into the engine bay. Um, it is a good rule of thumb that the rib side of the belt goes on the rib pulleys and the smooth part goes on the smooth side of the pulleys. Um, you can kind of start wherever. I'm going to start here on the crankshaft pulley on the bottom of the engine and kind of work over towards the AC. And once you've gone around the AC, you're going to kind of put it under the water pump and back up through next to the pulley. And that'll hopefully get most of that right side done. Double check everything, making sure you're on the pulleys the correct direction. Again, having this printout will be really helpful. Now we're going to kind of take it over and get it over that power steering pump. Uh, then as soon as we do that, we'll move down to the alternator. And then you want to make sure you have your tool handy once you've gotten that far to make sure you are able to grab the tensioner 
and we'll be doing it counterclockwise again here in just one second after I'm fully around everything. Again, you want to double check, make sure everything looks good before you put it on the tensioner. Uh, you just don't want to ruin your belt in any manner. Um, these things are pretty durable, but also just you don't want to have one break on you because you messed it up and put it on wrong. So I've got it going around the alternator right now. Sometimes they are a bit of a pain to get. Um, then we'll go ahead and grab that tool. Now with that 3 8 drive bar for the serpentine belt, we can go ahead and stick that down in the tensioner. And then we will go ahead and move it counterclockwise. You do want to make sure the belt is on the inside of this so you don't have to try to get it all the way around because it won't fit that way. And then you're just going to slide it up onto that tensioner. And then as soon as that happens, you're going to have to crank it over. You're going to slowly release the tension back by putting it clockwise, making sure everything is exactly how it should be. It is really important that you have everything lined up properly. All of the belts are the correct direction on the pulleys. And sometimes it does take a little bit to get this to seat on this tensioner. Then you slowly release it back to the clockwise position or to the right and everything will get on there. And uh, sometimes it's a pain to get that back off. And you gotta kinda wiggle it a little bit to get it that 3 8 ratchet off. And then it just comes right on out once you get it right. And so now we're gonna go ahead and test. I'm sorry I didn't have good quality of audio, but you will see the engine crank over here right about now and it will show you that everything is lined up properly and working exactly how it should. And now it's time to reinstall our air intake. We did spray that out a little bit and we'll go ahead and put that cover back on the box. Um, that was needed just because of that longer tool that I had, um, but you may not need that if you don't have really big hands, but it did surely help make that project go quicker. And so it's just got a couple clips on the end of it to connect that box. And then we'll go ahead and grab our air intake and put that over next. So that pretty much just slides into place. Um, you do want to kind of wiggle it if you need to and make sure it is seated properly, which means it is up against those reinforcements on both sides. And then you're just going to take a flathead and tighten that down too tight. You don't have to kill it, um, but you do want it tight. And so tighten that guy down and then go back to the other side and do the same thing right there and that will get your uh, line all tightened and ready for us to put the engine cover on with those 10 millimeter screws so we just have four more bolts to get we have to do these two first and you will want a 10 millimeter with a three inch extension on your ratchet so you don't bust your knuckles on that metal piece right there but go ahead and get those things nice and tight you don't have to kill it but uh, you don't want it wobbling around as well go ahead and put your connector on with your hose and use those needle nose pliers to get that seated correctly and uh, then we have this other piece of plastic that you're going to put on top of your engine and the next two little bolts go right in there 10 millimeter as well go ahead and tighten those down you may want to push on the back side of the cover as well because it will have a little piece there but that is all that there is to this project thank you guys so much for watching go ahead and comment and subscribe if you've not done so yet thank you all so much for watching how you can do this yourself on your nissan frontier have a great day